So I'm currently working on a new side project, which is kind of to develop like wholly agentic workflows using Claude code. I've taken my old Epicodus capstone project and I'm using it as a playground. So I want to rewrite it using different or like optimized workflows. So uh, I kind of wanted to show kind of what that looks like right now. I don't know how many of you guys have used or, or played with Claude code or another CLI kind of agent. So I want to show you what that looks like. I would also, I, I literally just uh, for the last half hour, I've been trying out some new commands to integrate some more like automated get flows where the agent can create issues and then do work based off of those issues. So I don't know what's going to happen, but at least we can see it and test it out for a sec. Everything in here so far has all been built wholly with this CLI tool. This is Claude code. So it built a mono repo, pretty much no issue using a tech stack that I defined in a specifications document I developed with the Claude code desktop application. So the way the agents work for context is interesting. There are user project and subfolder based markdown files that every single time the agent is initiated, it knows to look for. So it'll start in your user directory and then drop down into whatever project is. And this is where you tell it the core behaviors that you want it to observe. You can also put in project specific commands to use, references to different documents that it should look up whenever it spins up. So this is basically context management, how you rehydrate context or, or have a memory across projects. Additionally, you enhance that with project specific specifications. So again, this is just a markdown file that you have your agent generate and then update as you flow through. So you see, I gave it the tech specs, it broke it down into steps that I approved. This is what we're working with. Package management, you see right here, we're on the database layer is going to be the next step. API, whatever. And so this will all get progressively completed. The issue thing that I want to show off today is something brand new. So I haven't really used it a whole lot, but basically what I want to try to do is use Claude to implement Storybook into the web app and then maybe build a component to demo really quick. So I'm in my repo, I'm on main. So, uh, the CLI has a nice feature called slash commands. And this is basically a prompt that you write and then have accessible to just reuse. So this prime is reading all of the Claude files, plans, related documents that I've instructed it to look at to rebuild its, con its context. So it should understand where we're at in the project. Once it's done reading everything. I'm just going to let loose and allow it to run commands. I might revise the prompt so it's not asking for all these permissions later on. All right. So now I want to create a new issue. I want to push this issue, implement storybook with a generic button. We'll just go big. Uh, and I will do we'll the generic button component. This is going to create an issue in GitHub. Uh, yeah, while well, this is running, if anybody has any questions to fill in space or time. I remember asking you last, but I can't remember what. You said at the end, like like the tokens, you know, it's running up. But I think you had said you haven't really run into a, a limit yet, right? With the tokens that it's using. No. So I am right now, I'm on a private Claude Max plan. So this is the $100 a month. And basically it gives you super generous access on a rolling five-hour window to get 20% Claude Opus usage. And then once that, once that usage is done, it drops you down into Claude Sonnet. You can also specify the models that you want to use. For instance, if you just want to use Opus for planning mode, um, you can do that. All right, this is a pretty large issue, but this is what it did. So I'll say yes. And we should see this issue pop up 
GitHub. There it is. All right. Now I've got another command. What's it doing? Oh, it's creating labels for me. All right. So let's just prep this next command. We're going to pull the issue. This is another prompt. I'll show, I can actually show the prompt. Pull issue. And this is just a markdown file that I that I generated. We're basically going to give it an argument, the issue number. It will pull it down. I've asked it to create a new work tree to do the work in the work tree. And then when it's done, do the commit, create a PR, and also update the plan with all the relevant stuff. And this is all brand new to me. So issue, are we looking at issue number five? Issue number five. And we'll just see what it does. Now I know like if I wasn't using this issue thing, like I know 100% that I could say, just give it a straight command. I want to implement Storybook and then it will do a really good job at reaching out and fetching any data that it needs. And, and doing the work, like it's it's really good at completing tasks. Dustin, I've got a two part question. Um, uh -huh. How reliable is the stuff that it's outputting? And part two, how afraid should we be of this? So the key part, the output is long. You know, it's really eerie how much this simulates a kind of a dev lead type relationship where if you have tickets or tasks that are tightly scoped with clear objectives, it's remarkably successful. Like the code's reliable. Um, sometimes it can be overly complex and you can ask it, ask it to tone it down. But again, if you define the code styles and the general directives on how you want the code written, it's really good. It's also really good at once you establish the styles and the conventions you want, it will follow those for the most part. Um, and it's also really cheap to ask it to refactor and do things differently. So it's good. You do have to review it just like any other work that you do. You're as the, the developer, you are responsible for the code that comes out, but it's, it's all reviewable. You know, it's everything that's been done is right. It's all very transparent what it's doing. So you just have to be really good at reading the code. As far as should we be worried? I don't. That's a hard one to answer. I do think that workflows like this, where maybe not we're doing entire, you know, Git hub integrations, but where we're using agents like this to produce components and APIs, I think that's not too far away. And I would suggest that if you're on projects that allow it, I'd probably start playing with it. You know, as soon as I can get this workflow kind of approved and, and ironed out, then I'd probably start, I'd probably start using it. Like for instance, I'd, as soon as I can get this done, I'll probably have Daniel start working this way or experimenting with it. Yeah. It's not too far. It's not too far away. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the second question was a little tongue in cheek, but it's, uh, this is pretty wild. I, I hadn't seen this before. Yeah. It's, it's really impressive. And once you get the hang of it, like you can put out codes pretty quickly. So I wish, uh, yeah, we'll see how fast this goes to see if we can get at least storybook running it really quick. But yeah, we'll just see if it will run. And sorry if you already uh, mentioned this, but the the hundred dollar a month plan is is that a like a requirement for using this? Do you would would you be able to use it with a lesser plan? Just you might hit limits. There's a tw they they have a twenty dollar plan. You'd hit the limits pretty quickly, especially the opus limits. But the value, I think that you're going to get from even the hundred dollar plan is worth it. So I have used this. I'm currently using this to work on a feature for the current project I'm on. It's been really successful at writing tests. It will self iterate over tests. Like if they're broken and it will fix them. That has a whole nother workflow problem with like, you know, you really need to understand the tests or you should probably work on a test plan with it. So that way you can specify what tests that you would like it to run or write 
that way as a developer, you've got some control over the behaviors that it's building into these functions. So technical specs, testing documents, and guidelines are probably going to be the main ways that you guide behavior. Yeah, see, it's right in buttons. Let's see what, let's see what it's built so far. So we may not run this, but I mean, this is the code that it's putting out. Storybook preview file. This is the component that it wrote for us. I mean, obviously fairly sophisticated and maybe beyond what we normally want, but I mean, again, it's really cheap to refactor that and ask it for simpler implementations or more complex. Still working. I mean, if, and if it gets this straight, I mean, the power of this is saying how many of you guys have implemented Storybook in a project you're on and did it take you longer than this demo to do it is going to be the question. With pod code, do you still get access to like an, an interface somewhere? You know, you can just chat with chat GPT. Do you still get that with cloud code or with whatever their, their, the cloud interface is? Oh uh, yeah. Well, Starbuck. So it just launched it by itself. It went hard on that story. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Uh, I'm missing dependency. So it knows something went wrong. So it's trying to fix itself. It added a timeout to where it's not going to run forever. Daniel, to answer your question, yes, like this is the, my Claude instance, right? So now you can see I've got money buckets. This is the technical specs that I did. This is the document that it generated, right? So this is what I built up in a session. This probably took about two hours of going back and forth to generate uh, kind of like the plan for the, you know, model repo architecture requirements that I want as well as app behaviors and kind of modeling some stuff and then fed that in. And that's what you saw got broken down into the plan.md file. And let's see, did this work? Now let's see what happens when I launch this. Hmm. Okay, still some stuff to iron out. That's when we put on the error. Work this out. Well, I'll probably doing, be doing more of these as I keep updating the GitHub integration, different automated workflows, and just the project in general. Um, I'll probably be doing a couple passes at this pro, oh, there we go. So, so 20 minutes. Let's commit, push, and write APR for this work. Yeah. It's impressive. I'm not going to lie. There, there have been a lot of questions about what this means for developers and, and my job and, you know, how we work at the company. But I think the idea is we elevate everybody from, you know, kind of rote mechanical development and just writing code into more like we're super powered by our level of abstraction and thinking has gone up the tree, right? To where we're thinking about architectures and features as a whole. And we're using agents as the dev to implement the work. And we're responsible for, you know, the code review and writing the tickets, et cetera, you know, using help, but, but we become much more powerful by being able to efficiently and safely bend the AI to our coding will and the things that we wanted to do. Right. So you saw how easy it is to get carried away. I asked for a simple button and it gave me all of this. Maybe that's not what we want, but pretty crazy. All right. Thanks, everybody.